What is being done to enhance the response of CAR T-cell therapy and by specific antibody therapy? So, you know, CAR T-cell therapy and bispecific antibodies have certainly transformed how we treat patients with heavily pretreated myeloma who have relapsed many times over. Uh, but we know that these therapies are not curative in that group of patients, and sometimes the remissions can be short, particularly those with higher risk disease. So we certainly want to better understand why some patients have durable responses to these therapies and why others do not, and how we can uh, make these uh, therapies perform better for all of our patients. So there is a lot of interest in the immune microenvironment um, you know, in you know, these therapies. The immune microenvironment is a complex system of cells and substances that can promote or suppress the immune system's ability to fight cancer. Immune checkpoint inhibitors take the breaks off the immune system, allowing the immune system to recognize and attack cancer cells. So immune checkpoint inhibitors, like you mentioned, I think are one area of investigation. Now the immune checkpoint inhibitors have a checkered past in myeloma studies, so I think there's a little bit of trepidation uh, with these agents. Studies using the checkpoint inhibitor Keytruda in myeloma were stopped due to increased number of adverse events in the study arm. But, you know, we're using these in a very different manner when we're combining them with bispecific antibodies as well as CAR T cell therapy. So uh, there are ongoing studies looking at PD-1, PD-L1, immune checkpoint inhibitors combined with bispecific antibodies. For example, at Levine Cancer Institute, we're looking at nivolumab for just a couple of doses after IDA-cell CAR T-cell therapy to see if we can improve expansion of the CAR T-cells and persistence of the CAR T-cells and get more durable results uh, after IDA-cell. And there are other factors um, that limit CAR T-cell function, um, other immune checkpoint inhibitors that will be uh, tested in the months and years ahead. There are other factors in the marrow microenvironment or in the tumor microenvironment that can suppress the manner in which uh, T-cells activate. A good example of this, there's a molecule called adenosine when present at very high levels in the tumor microenvironment that can kind of paralyze functionality of T-cells and there's an oral drug that's currently being developed that inhibits the production of adenosine in the tumor microenvironment. So the question you know, we want to ask, obviously, is if we inhibit the production of adenosine in the tumor microenvironment, can CAR T-cell therapy and bispecific antibody therapy perform better? So lots of very interesting things going on, both at the benchtop level but as well as in early clinical trials. What are immune checkpoints? The interaction of white blood cells uh, with cancer cells is highly intricate, and there are signals that can be produced by the cancer cells that will tell uh, the immune system to stand down. So when we talk about uh, checkpoint uh, uh, inhibitors, uh, so immune checkpoints are, are proteins that can be expressed either on the T cells themselves or on the cancer cells that basically tell the T cells to stand down, you know, and, and this, you know, process has a physiologic purpose. So, you know, we need a functioning immune system to fight off infection, to fight off cancers, for example, but we can't have too overactive immune system where we start developing autoimmune diseases and what have you. So there's this very delicate balance that's required as far as immune function is concerned. And cancer cells can take advantage of that and can, again, uh, liberate factors that will tell those T cells to stand down. And there's a number of them that have been uh, identified. You know, we talked about PD-1, PD-L1. There's something called LAG3. There's something called TIGIT. Uh, uh, there's something called a TGF-beta in the tumor microenvironment that can cause T cells to function less well. We talked about adenosine. So there's all of these things uh, that can be present in and around you know, those cancer cells that will impair the ability of the CAR T cell or by specific antibody to do what it's doing. The CAR T cells may still bind, attach to the myeloma cell, but if all these signals are, are being liberated in the, in, the, in the immune microenvironment telling it not to activate, not to kill, that's a problem. And we need to better understand the mechanisms behind that and how we can overcome that. So CAR Ts are without a doubt very powerful transform transformative therapies. 
Uh, however, there's still some room for improvement. Uh, certainly, there's room for improvement in the toxicity. Um, as we uh, all have discussed, the, you know, the risk of CRS and ICANNs and so forth, but also in the efficacy uh, because it appears that uh, the majority, if not all patients, eventually experience a relapse, particularly when those drugs are used in the relapse refractory setting. And I think a few things are being pursued to try to enhance the activity of the CAR-Ts. One of them is as maintenance therapy which is a little bit controversial because, you know, it makes biological sense, but it kills one of the greatest advantages of this therapy, which is to have a treatment-free interval. But nevertheless, things are being pursued, including the use of cell mods, which are drugs that are evolutions of the immunomodulatory agents. I mean, many of you have, may have heard about iberdomide or mesigdomide. And those drugs have a potent effect on the myeloma cell, but also in the immune system and could enhance the activity of the CAR-Ts. Other things that are being pursued as maintenance therapy are bispecific T-cell engagers of a different target, trying to hit, quote-unquote, two targets at the same time. Uh, and yet, other approaches are drugs that can modify the body's immune response, something that's called uh, that uh, we call um, checkpoint inhibitors, things that kind of take the brakes off the immune system and it could make those T cells eventually work better. Other source of uh, potential improvement comes from the CAR T cells themselves. Uh, you know, some, cell, some CAR Ts in development actually go after not one but two targets. We have seen preliminary data of uh, CAR Ts that target both BCMA and another uh, protein called CD19 that can be expressed in early, early uh, cells uh, that, that grow towards myeloma. Um, also, we have in clinical trial a CAR T cell that targets simultaneously BCMA and GPRC5D, which are two targets that we know are successful um, against a successful, uh, meaningful targets for immunotherapy in myeloma. There are other approaches, uh, like third and fourth generation uh, CAR-Ts that have some technical enhancements that make them, can make them more potent, as well as the idea of allogeneic CAR-Ts, uh, which might make them more efficient, but also remove some of the barriers the patient have to receive CAR-T now by being able to have an off-the-shelf universal donor product that can be deployed uh, in short period of time. What are fast CAR T cells? Fast CAR T uh, is a term that has been used for CAR Ts that have a faster manufacturing process, uh, and that would address one of the main barriers uh, for CAR T, which is you know the time that takes between the decision being made to pursue CAR T and actually receiving the infusion, and a lot of the time is consuming with manufacturing. So if you have a faster manufacturing process, you can substantially uh, cut off that time. And some of the constructs that, uh, that have been developed with that property also seems perhaps to be more active, so there's certainly room for improvement there.